Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. class uh, we were discussing about uh, hydrogen abstraction reactions right intramolecular hydrogen abstraction particularly from hydrogen from the gamma carbon right just for refreshing just put an intramolecular hydrogen abstraction we we'll see from gamma right uh, we saw that reactions what we did is that we took a carbonyl which has hydrogen in the gamma carbon. So, we took this system. Right? So, what we did once we photolyzed, we said that it will go for my S 1, it gets excited to S 1, then it undergoes a nice intersystem crossing to get me a triplet. So, we get a triplet excited state. Then what we said? After that, we said that this alkoxy radical O dot can abstract an hydrogen from the gamma carbon because of its 6 member transition state and we study the stereochemistry. So, we said that, so if it does that, so you end up with a one for di radical so we get a nice one for di radical now <coughs> after this it's more about your radical chemistry right so what your one for di radical can do what this one for di, di radical can do? One, it can undergo a nice cyclization I get a cyclic product or it undergoes a beta cleavage to get me an acetophenone plus alkene or we studied it can undergo a reversal of hydrogen migration. to give back my not essentially my starting material if it is chiral carbon then we can see that the stereochemistry will be changed when it is a reversal of hydrogen when i take an r, r optically active i end up with an racemic so that's what we studied in the previous class we took our uh, compounds which has a hydrogen in the gamma carbon and we said that that will end up with a 1 4 di radical. 1 4 di radical can do 3 good reactions. One is cyclization, another is your beta cleavage and reversal of your hydrogen migration. So, this beta cleavage we said you can call this reaction as 
nor is type 2. Now, we just get into some examples and try to understand like if your gamma carbon does not have an hydrogen, you have a system where your carbon gamma carbon does not have an hydrogen, then what your alkoxy radical that is your carbonyl system can do. Okay. So, I take this system. So, in this system if you see like my alpha carbon does not have an hydrogen, okay, it is a methyl okay, and my gamma, yeah, I have no carbon there, it is a nitrogen. Okay. If I take this type of system and if I photolyze, what happens? Initially, you know that it goes nicely to S1, then undergoes an because it is an aromatic system, so it uh, undergoes uh, aromatic ketones, so it undergoes an intersystem crossing to T 1. So, can I write down my T 1? So, we uh, in the earlier class we said that if there is no gamma carbon, okay, it can abstract an hydrogen from your beta, okay, that because it is a 5 member transition state. So, it is little bit favored than your 6 member, but anyhow gamma is there then that will be the first choice. So, if an abstract an hydrogen. I get a system like this. Right, this is my photolysis. What I end up? I end up with a 1 3 di radical. So, what we can call this chemistry? We can call this as a beta hydrogen abstraction, right. We said gamma hydrogen abstraction, this we can call as a So, what this 1 3 di radical can do? I studied. See, now like once the photochemistry is over, it is all about your di radicals 1 3, 1 4, 1 5, 1 6. Uh, since we have studied all this about di radicals, so it should be easy for you to now predict the products. Any idea what 1 3 di radical can do? We have studied that. Alpha cleavage reaction, we took like a cyclobutone butanone system and then we did a decarbonylation, we got 1 3 di radical. So, what that 1 3 di radical gave us? One, it can cyclize okay, to give me a cyclopropane type of ring or it can do a hydrogen abstraction that is what we have studied in 1 3 di radical. 
here the hydrogen abstraction is not that much facile because I have protected by methyl and everything. No? So, it, uh, it has only one choice to cyclize. See now uh, photochemistry what two things you have to now remember, if you know that then you can predict the product. First thing you have to know whether it the chemistry happens from singlet or triplet or from both to give me what radical, what di radical. Once you know you are halfway right, okay. after that it is all about your di radical. So, you can just simply understand what 1 6 di radical can do, what 1 5 can do, 1 4 and 1 3 that is all. Once you know that then based on that chemistry you can work out, just find out what is the di radical you get most of the time when you do the photochemistry. Once you know the di radical then write all the possible products, then based on that you can eliminate depending upon the stability or radical formation and you can end up with single major product. Yes. Keeping uh, this is one of the best example of beta hydrogen abstraction. Okay. I'll take another. Um, we'll go for best example. So, I have taken I have taken a system okay. alpha okay, it is not like an hydrogen to abstract beta gamma okay, I think is there. So, I, I have my alpha I cannot abstract this hydrogen okay, previously I cannot there is no hydrogen here. So, this is also not that facile to abstract see I do not have now alpha beta gamma. Okay. So, I, I take the system and photolyze it. So, again it is an aromatic type of ketone. Okay, you know that it can go S1 uh, inter system. Try to write this, nothing wrong in writing this, okay. S1 to T1 inter system crossing. So, what radical then it is T1? So, I can get a system. like this that my T 1 should be like this. So, I can write this as an alpha beta gamma okay. then I can say it is delta. So, I have an hydrogen here right. So, it can also abstract from your delta. <coughs> Abstracts from your delta. Again, you are getting a system of what radical? One, two, three, four, five. So it's one five. Unfi di radical. See, in this case, uh, again you can recollect yourself what one phi di radical can do. Cyclization, any other things. In this case, yeah, it, it does nice cyclization. Any other thing? What one phi di radical can do? What? Huh? It does a very nice hydrogen abstraction, right? So, in this case, there is no chance of doing it. So, it undergoes a cyclization. Right. 
So, we can call this as So, you can it can do delta hydrogen abstraction also, it is it is more about proximity okay, whether that carbonyl can take that hydrogen okay, rather than distance it also about a proximity. It is again like not a very tough example, but it looks to be a simple ketone, right. So, what you well, if I shine light, what do you think? Yeah, you know that you get S1 and then your triplet, which is your excited ketone. this is your T 1. What do you get? Uh, where you can think hydrogen abstraction can happen? Next to oxygen. So, it is alpha, beta, gamma, delta and you can call us epsilon, right. So, if uh, other way around also you can number it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. You can call us 1, 7 hydrogen abstraction. You can start from your oxygen number. Okay. O dot is your 1. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, you can get a nice 1, 7 hydrogen abstraction or you can call it also epsilon hydrogen abstraction. So, it is better you call it as 1 7 hydrogen abstraction. So, what you get if you do that? So, my phenyl here, make your O dot. Right. So, what is this radical? 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I say 1, 6 di radical. So, always uh, see, I am always giving importance to this intermediate which is formed because that will take me to the right chemistry product. Okay. So, what radical you should get? That should be your aim. Yeah, there are reactions which can give you uh, nitrines, carbines, but in this case, you are ending up most of the time radicals. So, this will you know that this can easily cyclize. If it does not cyclize, then you will end up with what? Can you remember if you does not cyclize, if it does not uh, this case it is nice to cyclize, okay. if it does not want to cyclize, then you are left with only one option that is hydrogen abstraction. Okay. You can think about hydrogen abstraction also for example, if this can abstract an hydrogen from here, then what happens? You good you get like a photoenol type that easy form, right? If I get a hydrogen, then I can make a double bond here, which you have studied. That type also you can, but this is more facile in this case because wh why? You end up with a very nice product, pyranol.
very nice method to synthesize pyranals. You can call us pyranals. Very good method to do synthesis because it goes completely in this product and this is your major product. Hmm? So, if you want I can call this as epsilon hydrogen abstraction or you can call this as 1 7 hydrogen abstraction. Right. So, you have seen alpha uh, beta, gamma, delta and epsilon hydrogen abstraction. So, if your carbonyl has more proximity it tries to do all this chemistry, it is not like it has to do only gamma hydrogen. Yeah, gamma hydrogen is much favored. <clears throat> I like to do this example. I will give you some time for you guys to try this example. This is a very good example. See how many can get me the product. Okay. Just try by yourself. A type of cyclic ketone, okay, uh, but acyclic ketone type of cyclic. Sorry, it's not an aromatic. Hmm? So what you expect then? First stage, once I photolyze. Yes, sir. Once I photolyze. It's an acid. Uh, it is not an aromatic ketone. So, it goes S1, then it can it can enter system cross to T1 and T1 say you get product or you get product from both. both. Yeah, that that is the only thing you have to remember here. You, you, have, you will be getting product from both. So, for example, I am writing the radicals of this, not the, the radicals. So, how they look? So, I got this is your T1 for ex T1 or S1, whatever. So, what radical is this? Uh, yeah, this you cannot. Uh, after this what it can do? Hydrogen abstraction, right. So, from where? From where it can abstract the hydrogen? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay. So, you are saying it abstracts from here, okay. I am just considering what you are saying then. I am just going to write based on that. So, I will write this product in this direction. You write it by yourself so that you do not get confused. You get a nice OH. <coughs> As you said, one seven, I can take it, right? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get this. Okay, that's all. Hmm? 
why you are not thinking that it can do a gamma hydrogen abstraction? Because you said gamma hydrogen is much more facile, right? You can now give a choice. It's, it can do gamma hydrogen abstraction also. So, what is then it is? 1, 5, right? It will be 1, 5 hydrogen abstraction. So, it is not that it does only one hydrogen abstraction. Okay? If it has a choice, it will do. You can get many products. In this case, it is nice to abstract an hydrogen from your gamma. Hmm? Finish the product. Write the product. Finish writing the product. It should be eight and four. Make sure how you are fixing your stereochemistry of your OH. Can I fix the can I fix the stereochemistry? No, no, because this whole chemistry how it goes by radical right? that always keep in mind okay whether it is a concerted process or it is a radical process many time people will ask you how you differentiate singlet nitrine triplet nitrine singlet carbon and triplet carbon best way is by its stereochemistry okay this is very stereo specific product you get in singlet because it's a concerted process in triplet it's a stepwise so it's a radical mechanism so your stereochemistry will be lost Finished. Hmm? Now, what you have? You have a system. See, it is not a ketone, that is why you should be little bit careful. Okay? It is a type of ester. Okay? This is a type of an ester and this is your ketone. Hmm? Uh, so, you know the ester for uh, lambda max is different compared to your ketone ram lambda max. What happens if we fertilize this? Yeah, you can always go to a, that you can write S1, then you get intersystem crossing. First write the radical, then you can think always. So, where you are thinking that it this can abstract an hydrogen. One, two, three, four, five. I have an hydrogen here in fifth position, right, which is the gamma, right? Alpha, beta, alpha, beta, gamma. I have an hydrogen there. Then I have an hydrogen here. In this case, then hydrogen here. So, which you prefer to abstract? You want to abstract on gamma hydrogen? Hmm? Okay, if I abstract on gamma hydrogen, my radical, where it is my radical? My radical is between my cyclopropane and my heteroatom O. I think it is nice to have it there.
yeah whatever you said fine you can abstract from here but just think the radical you can abstract from here okay that is not possible because you don't want to a radical on cyclopropane right you can abstract the same thing is there you can abstract from here also okay and then you can abstract from here see so what they did is that yes like us when they carried out this photochemistry they also had a pro like understanding problem like it can abstract from here so what they did they did a deuterium type of studies okay they deuterated this two hydrogen and they found out there is no hydrogen abstraction from here okay the hydrogen abstraction mostly happened from this end okay so this should be your what 9 right 1 2 3 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, it is your 1, 9 hydrogen abstraction. So, you can write, you can say hydrogen abstraction. So, if it does that, what do you get? Okay, this product, okay. Then you can say it is. The once you leave like 1, 6, 1, 7, most of the time they cyclize this, okay, this type of radicals. Um, so, once you cyclize this, you end up with what? Nice 8 member type of ring, right? Can you cyclize? this type of products you can you can get in photochemistry okay these are all isolated products they have been characterized fine it's not like we are just writing for theoretical okay well established reactions you take this product you when you shine light you end up with this product okay this has been isolated and characterized that means it stays in column and everything yeah? So, we can call this as 1 9, right. So, we have seen 1 7 and then we are now seeing 1 9. So, it, it does not have any big restriction that is what you should understand when you uh, think of intramolecular hydrogen abstraction. It is not people always intramolecular hydrogen abstraction nor is type 2 reaction. Okay, it is not that when there is a possibility of hydrogen abstraction from other areas it does it okay? and it gives major product also. I uh, will take this very good example. This is a nice uh, Are you started studying natural products? So, you you are on A, B, C, D, right, rings, which you are I think next class, next semester you might study natural products, okay. There you will see terpenoids, alkaloids, terpenes, all these things, okay, where you have line, this you call normally A ring, B ring, C ring, D ring, okay. Then you will always have a methyl here, this question. I was taking a system where I have made an ester O. Carbonyl. Okay. 
with a benzophenone. Just I taken a type of system, okay, like type of steroids, okay, cholesterol. All this time falls on this, okay, and just attach my benzophenone and want to see what I type of hydrogen abstraction this guy do. S another example, same another example I have taken like same compound. Just I have extended two carbons now. I want to uh, teach you how the proximity matters. In this two, this two example will tell you how proximity things are. So we are taking two good examples. Okay. Um, <coughs> So, once you fertilize S, yes, you know it goes to S1, then it undergoes intersystem crossing to my T1. Okay. So, what it does if in T1, if I have a radical, because I might end up with a radical. So, so I have a O dot and C dot. Okay, so I get a di radical C dot and O dot. In this case, also C dot O dot. Now, what happens? This O dot, the closest proximity for this guy, okay, is this hydrogen for this O dot. If you do the model, you will really understand. And for this O dot, the closest proximity for this is this two hydrogens. See, so only I have in increased one carbon and you can see the proximity completely changes. For this, it is your B ring. For this, it is your C ring. So, if I want to write, then I can say that I am just removing. So, the bond will be made in this. In this case, it will be OH. I can remove this hydrogen and I can say the bond is made here. This is very good example for hydrogen abstraction from distant site. So, the number here does not matter whether it is 1, alpha, beta, gamma, nothing matters here it is properly hydrogen abstraction from the distance side. And you can see that how if I change the carbon, improve, increase the carbon, the whole proximity of the ring changes. So, for this case B was very close and in this case it is for C ring, fine.
So, this example tells how clever is your molecule. This particular example you can see. It is a proper diketone. Okay. Um, and for example, I am trying to use some filters okay, and shine only my aromatic ketone. Right. Now, I have given a clue that I am going to excite my aromatic ketone. Can you come out with the product? <coughs> See whether what molecule does, you, you do by yourself and get the product. Can we understand what this molecule can do? So, what happens? So, first step you said that you will be photolyzing, it goes to S1 and then it undergoes an ice intersystem crossing to give me a T1. So, what you can do now? From where? I can write alpha, beta, gamma. I can write alpha, beta, gamma. Okay, it has an option. You want to take it from here? Hmm? Okay, do that. So, you get a 1 4 di radical. Okay. So, what you study is 1 4 di radical. What you have studied 1 4 di radical? Cyclization happens. Huh? Addition abstraction from where you want option because you cannot distract your aromatic ring. So, that option gets lost. Yeah? So, you can cyclize. If you cyclize, what product you get? You say you are going to get this product. Yes? If it cyclize, I think yes, yes to Right, you you can get this product only if you cyclize. Uh, see molecule, yeah. If it is one four di radical, yes, molecule has to do cyclization. Uh, but uh, it does another thing. It say that I am not going to go this side because I have much more easier way to do. What it can do? Any 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 guess? I always say that when I have adding something new to the system, just use it. See, this ketone is there, right? Molecule always likes to do this, ne? which you have studied. Or you can write it or you can write in arrow so that. You can do this. Why it has to do this? Because if it does this, it can make a six member ring, which is very nice for it. Rather than being in a strain one with a six and four, now we can have a six and six, like you get a very nice product.
So, you think this product? Which one? Which sir? This dye radical, that is why I asked you. Yeah, you can get it from here. That is why I asked you whether you can abstract and you can abstract from here or you can abstract from here. But most of the time, if you are selectively exciting this ketone, okay, it is more most of the time you are selectively exciting this ketone, then is the rate of intersystem crossing is passed, okay, benzophenone. It is a benzophenone that is acetone, okay. So, it intersystem cross to your triplet and from triplet it will be a di radical and the chemistry dominates from there. See the, now you understand na, how molecules are little bit, see it does not, we, we thought about having this product, we said this is the product, but molecule is saying that this, now you understand. This see this is much more stable because you are getting a type of so it prefer to take this direction than this direction. So there are many examples. If it has no choice, then it takes this ring strain to form this product. If it is given a choice, then it takes that part. Okay. So far, what we were discussing is about intramolecular hydrogen abstraction. There are some reactions where intermolecular hydrogen abstraction also happens. Uh, not some, most of the time, intramolecular hydrogen abstraction also you can observe. That happens mostly from your solvent type of mechanism. If your solvent can donate hydrogen or hydrogen radical, then you can see most of the time inter, uh, intermolecular hydrogen abstraction happening. Okay, that is famously you call as photo reduction of your carbonyl chemistry, okay. you will see that. It is a single word intermolecular hydrogen abstraction. Best example is that we take a benzophenone, okay, and do the photolysis. The presence of you can take your reduced benzophenone, okay, and if you do in this solvent, you do the photolysis and see what happens or you can take ice acetone and do it in isopropanol okay whatever so i selected this case is that since we know that this can on photolysis gets you to s1 the nice undergoes intersystem crossing to give me a t1 right so your t1 will be looking like So, you have studied this. Now, uh, which radical is going to abstract from where? You study that it is an alkoxy radical abstracts an hydrogen from your carbon, not from this, because again you will be generating an alkoxy radical. Here means you can abstract nicely, you will get a C dot. Right? Fine. So, what you get then? You get a pH. PH C dot OH plus mm, 
get to this radicals right so this can recombine so you can see a cc bond formation happening here okay Okay, this is your major product. This here it is a proper intramolecular hydrogen abstraction happening from your solvent. Right. Same example if you do photolysis in presence of toluene, because this I am taking a nice system and doing it. Okay. If I do the photo reduction with the same compound in toluene, then what do you expect? taking say doing it in choluvin. So, what you can expect? Yeah, it fertilizes, it goes to all your singlet and then it undergoes inter system processing to triplet, then so you get a, a radical like this T one. So, it has to now react with your toluene to give you what? What I should get? I can abstract an hydrogen from this method. Okay. So, then I will be ending up Sorry, we'll be ending up with a C dot OH plus C S two dot. Right. See previous case, what happened? Like both the radicals, what you got were similar, right? So they just combine. In this case, this will combine. This and this. Is that is the possibility, or you can say like you can say I will get this. Why cannot you you get bibenzyl type of things? Yeah. Yeah. Then you can say that I can also combine this. You can say this happens, ne? and you can also say, yes, sir, I can get this also. Just by saying changing the solvent, okay. Um, Previous case, I just took the same system where you don't get radical problem. Now I have taken different solvent like toluene. Now I can say, see, these are the products which get. See, uh, okay, I am selling which will be major product. I have now three. Can you assume which will be formed major? Which one? So we will call A, B, C. Huh? C, Y. Yeah, this is the because you are taking that in excess most of the time. Né? By radical stability, you can always go for A né? because this radical is much more stable, so they can stay in the solution, find their counterpart, then make a CC bond. So then it becomes more stable from radical stability point. This is very less formed, okay, very very less formed. So these are the two products which are you oftenly see, okay. So, the same photolysis uh, we will see in this class if I carry out in methanol what happens. Okay. In methanol it gives some other nice chemistry. Okay. Fine. Uh, so, so, in this class we have just discussed like you can see 
intramolecular hydrogen abstraction happening other than hydrogen atom from the gamma carbon. You have seen that it can abstract from beta, delta, epsilon and even from the distant site and plus we have introduced what is intermolecular hydrogen abstraction. So, next class may we will discuss about inter intermolecular hydrogen abstraction for some few minutes then we will get to addition to pi system that is your third reaction fine. So, we will end up our class now.